hands-on with the Synology DS1618 Plus and how to set it up with Time Machine. How's it going folks? This is Jeff Benjamin with Back to the Mac, episode number nine. We're doing things a little bit different this time around. Of course, we are looking at the DS1618 Plus. This is a six bay NAS from Synology and it comes with an expansion port and that allows you to do really awesome things like hook up a single or dual port 10 gigabit NIC or you can add an M.2 card for SSD cache. Needless to say, this is more of a higher end prosumer NAS model and you can find it in places like Amazon for about 800 bucks. So not cheap, but definitely powerful. You get a quad core 2.1 gigahertz processor. You get four gigabytes of RAM expandable up to 32 gigabytes of ECC RAM. And of course you get the aforementioned PCIe expansion slot for that M.2 adapter or for the 10 gig NIC adapters. Both of those are of course sold separately. So we have it pretty much unboxed. So let's look at the accessory pack. You get an ethernet cable, a second ethernet cable, a set of keys, some screws to mount your drives and a power cable. Now, before I walk you step-by-step step through the time machine setup tutorial, I just want to point out some of the hardware features. It's a six bay NAS. One of the things I like about the plus models is that you can turn off the lights. If you go to advanced mode and control panel and you go to the hardware section, you can dim the lights. You can basically turn them all the way off if you want to. You can even set a schedule for your lights. So you see they are going off just like that. It's a small thing, but it's one of the things I appreciate about the plus model Synology NAS machines. Those lights can be annoying. Now you can turn them off using scheduling or just turn them off outright. So let's turn them back on and there they are. I know a very small feature. You're probably thinking, why are you mentioning this? But it's just something I love. So uh, there is the logo DS1618 plus. Let's pop out the drive. Just press in like that at the bottom. There's the drive caddy and you can use those screws to mount either a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive. So you can see the inside and just pop them back in like that. Now you can lock each bay using the included keys. So if you want to lock this last bay, just stick the key in, turn it and it's locked. That way you can keep yourself or keep others from inadvertently removing a drive, which could be a very bad thing if it's being used. So if you've seen a Synology NAS before, you know pretty much what to expect build wise. It doesn't really deviate from the Synology design language at all. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now I have the power plugged in and I have a single LAN cable plugged in. So here is the rear. You can see it's dominated by these two fans. And the really nice thing about these fans is that they are high quality. Just listen. It's not very loud at all. And thanks to these drives inside, these Seagate Ironwolf 4 terabyte NAS drives, it's just a really quiet system overall. You don't have a lot of noise coming from it. You have your Kingsington lock, you have your power connector, you have two eSATA connections for expandability. You have four gigabit ethernet ports. And you have a pair of USB ports. There's also a USB port on the front. These are USB 3.0. You can actually connect a wireless dongle to those for wireless connectivity. And you have this right here. This is the PCIe expansion port. You actually have to unscrew all the screws on the back, uh, the case screws, in order to access that port and insert an expansion card. Now, as impressive as the hardware may be, my favorite thing about Synology is its software. The Synology DSM is amazing software. It's so simple and easy to use. It's just a joy to use. It is a web-based interface. Uh, I'm actually setting this up from scratch, so I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up. So I'm gonna give it a server name, a username, and a password. And just uncheck this, click next. So I literally have just reset this whole Synology NAS and setting it up from scratch. So we'll walk through the entire procedure of setting this up as a time machine destination, which is really handy considering that Apple just got out of the router business and with it went the time capsule backup solution. So now you can use a Synology NAS as a time machine backup solution. 
So since I reset this to defaults, I'm gonna to have to go through the entire process. That includes setting up a new volume, going to storage manager, going to volume, clicking create, selecting quick, clicking next, selecting all my drives, only have four drives in here, four, four terabyte drives, clicking okay. I'm gonna use one disk fault tolerance, that is SHR or Synology Hybrid RAID 1, and make sure BTRFS is enabled. This allows us to set up a quota for our shared folders. Click next, click next, and then click apply. Now it is saving. And this is going to take a while to set up this volume because it's going to go through and scrub the disk. You can see it's creating a file system. So while this consistency check is going on, it's literally going to take hours if you have you know, a large drive set up like I do. Uh, just be patient. Your performance isn't going to be nearly as good as it will once this completes. So just keep that in mind. All right, so eventually it will allow you, however, to go about your business. So you can go to control panel, select shared folder, create a new folder. We're going to call this time machine. And for location, choose your volume, click next. All right, and you can choose to encrypt the folder if you want to, it's up to you. All these settings are gonna be up to you. For this tutorial, I'm leaving all as default, so just click next all the way through and click apply. All right, so that shared folder is created. So just click okay. And now we wanna click where it says user under control panel. I'm gonna create a new user. So click create. For name, time machine. And then you want to put your password in, confirm your password, and then click next. Click next again, and then choose read write for your time machine shared folder permission and click next. Now give it a quota. I recommend giving it four times your projected backup amount. So I have a one terabyte iMac Pro. I'm going to give it four terabytes here for my backup. Now, of course, that will change if you're using multiple Macs, but if you get three to four times the amount of storage, basically the more storage you can allocate, the better, right? So go ahead and click next. Wait for it to load. Click next again. Click next again. Click apply. And it's going to save. Okay. So go ahead and go to file services this time under control panel. Now I use AFP because I've had the best experience with that. If you want to use SMB, you can try that, but I use AFP. I disable SMB. And then here you want to enable Bonjour Time Machine Broadcast via AFP, or if you're using SMB, obviously use SMB. Then click select Time Machine Folder, select your Time Machine Folder, and then click Apply. Then click Apply again. Okay, we are finished with DSM, so let's minimize our browser, and then we're gonna go to the Finder in macOS. So go to the Go menu, select Connect to Server, and then type in the following, AFP colon slash slash, and then the name of your server. In my case, it's luigi.local. You can use an IP address as well. Click connect. All right, and it connects. So once you verify that you're able to establish a connection, you can move on to the next step. And that next step is setting up Time Machine. So let's go ahead and close out of Finder, go to System Preferences, click Time Machine, Click select backup disk and then choose the time machine shared folder located on your NAS and then click use disk. It should ask you to connect, click connect, put in your time machine username and password. So time machine, the one we set up earlier, same password. And then click connect. So it's connecting to the NAS. And there we go. So let's usher things along. Go ahead and click where it says show time machine in menu bar if not already checked. And then go up to the menu bar, click the time machine icon and then click backup now. And look, it's looking for the backup disk and it's gonna start your backup momentarily. Now this first initial backup, especially if you have a lot of stuff to back up, it's gonna take a while. And that's partly due to the fact that you're connected via a gigabit ethernet connection. If you were connected with a 10 gigabit ethernet connection, 
things would likely move about a little faster. But again, this initial backup is always going to take a while, especially if you have a whole bunch of stuff backing up. Now you can use the options button in the bottom right hand corner of Time Machine Preferences to exclude certain folders from being backed up and that could save you some time. But bottom line is that this initial backup usually takes a while. And then after that, incremental backups start to kick in, you know, your hourly backups, your daily backups, your weekly backups. Um, and again, the more space you give, the more space you allocate to the shared folder, the further you'll be able to go back in time using Time Machine. So keep that in mind. So ladies and gents, that is how you set up a Synology NAS, specifically the DS1618 Plus as a Time Machine destination. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.